Praise the Lord, everyone. This time we're going to be bringing you our communion service. It is an extremely important service. And we thank God for all of the members of Outreach Christian Center who will participate in this with us. Uh, we just want to remind everyone that all of the things that we do, such as this, the sacraments, communion, baptism, whatever it may be, we do it by faith. So I'm sure that you're ready to take this. You have uh, the bread and you have your drink. It doesn't have to be uh, the grape juice. Or it doesn't have to be the official wafer that we use here at the church. It could just be ordinary bread. That's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that as we take this by faith, that we associate ourselves and remember what Christ had done on the cross already for us. We want to take this sacrament with a repentant heart. Make sure that your heart is right. I know when we do it at church, we, we have praise service and we, we have our sermon and, and by the time we get to this, we have a ready set mind, a mindset that's ready to worship and, 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 and to give God the glory that's through his name. So make sure that when we take this, that we have our mind on Jesus Christ. A thankful heart. We could just, any one of us can think about where would, we, where would our lives be? Where would we be right now if it had not been for Jesus Christ? God who knows all things said we were lost without hope. That means there's no need in looking for hope anywhere. But through Jesus Christ, he gave us a new life and a new hope. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 through 30, it told us when we are taking communion to examine ourselves. This is how serious that this service is. The verses say 27, so anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. 28. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. 29. For if ye eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment unto yourself. Listen to this, very important, verse 30. That is why many, many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. That is the power that this sacrament has. But in disobedience, if it has that type of power in obedience, just think about the reverse. Think about Many will live, many can get healed, many can get delivered, many can be encouraged if we take this with a right heart toward God. And the last thing that I want you to think about is when we take this, we are making a declaration that we believe in Christ, we believe in his word, we believe that this is not our home, that he had prepared a place for us in glory, that in his father's house are many mansions and he's already prepared one for us. And that he's going to come back one day and he's going to take us all home. That is the hope of every Christian and every believer today. So we're going to pray and then we're going to take this communion and we're going to believe that the glory of God will feel the presence of wherever we are as we give him thanksgiving. Father, we thank you and we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come to you, Lord God, and we ask forgiveness. Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings, our neglect, our rebellion, Lord God, our slowfulness, Lord. We want to have a right heart toward you in this moment, Lord, and we thank you. We know that you know all things about us. Before you, Lord, we stand open and naked without excuse, Lord. But we give you all the glory right now. We give you all honor and all praise, Lord. And we thank you what you did for us on Calvary Mount, Lord. Nobody else could have done it. There was no way that we could have been delivered and saved and set free. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No man, not a one of us, could have been reconciled back to the Father except by you. So we thank you, Lord. 
And we ask in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit would guide us as we take this Holy Communion in Jesus' name. In the 23rd verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul said to the disciples, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night, brothers and sisters, that he was betrayed, the same night he took bread. You can grab your bread, in the 24th verse it says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Here's the good part. The main part. The most important part. He says, Do this in remembrance of me. Think about what Christ has done for you in your life. Let's partake of this body. Mercy. In the 25th verse, he said, after the same manner with thanksgiving, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup by faith, this cup, the one you hold in your hand now, is the New Testament in my blood. Jesus said, this is the New Testament. I made all things new by the shedding of innocent blood on your behalf. He said, this, what we're about to do, brothers and sisters, this we must do in remembrance of him with Christ on our mind. Let us drink. Glory to God. Glory to God. Do you know what you've just done? Listen to what this 26th verse says in the New Living Testament. For every time, just like we just did, every time that we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we are announcing the Lord's death until our Savior comes back again. We're making an open declaration before all men and everything in the spirit world that we believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he was crucified, risen on the third day, and soon to come back to bring the church home. We make that declaration in Jesus' name. We thank God for you. This is something that you can continue to do. You just don't have to do it on the communion Sunday. You can do it any day of the week, any hour of the day. We thank you and we encourage you. We continue to let you know that our pastors and the ministerial staff here at our Christian Center is praying for each and every person who's a member of this body of Christ. We ask you to keep that mask on, keep that six feet of distance, but most of all, keep the faith in Jesus' name. Amen.